All right, well, I have officially started the AT. It is a very foggy morning. It's April 6th, about 8.30 in the morning. Spent the night at Springer Mountain Shelter. I did do a little bit of backtracking this morning, make sure I got that little section between Springer Mountain and the shelter. And now I am starting my way up to Maine. So uh, typically today, people go up to the Hawk Mountain or Gooch Gap shelters. Gooch Gap is about 15 miles, Hawk Mountain is only about eight. So depending on the rain and the weather, it's gonna really depend on where I stop. I'd like to get to Gooch, but I'm supposed to have some afternoon showers. And if so, then unfortunately I'm gonna have to stop early. So make sure I get warm and dry before sundown. So here we go. You know, with the fog the way it is, it definitely looks a little spooky. <laughs> Mile one. I am starting to realize that I have not done any research as far as the itinerary goes. Whoa. <laughs> so <laughs> almost everyone that I've spoken with so far, they have, I mean, spreadsheets. They know exactly where they're resupplying. They know exactly which shelters they're staying at, which I think is a little, a little bit ridiculous. But my plan, I'm just going to look up where my next resupply is, know how much food I need, and then I'm just gonna walk. I'm just gonna walk until I don't wanna walk anymore. Uh, so anyway, I think that uh, it's great if you're a planner. Uh, that is not me, at least for when I travel. I really enjoy just getting into a place, talking to folks, learning about it, learning about what I should do, instead of just planning everything in advance. So uh, it typically makes for a lot more fun trip. So one of the things I've noticed is that people have been so friendly so far, and I think it's probably just because everyone's starting the trail, everyone's really excited. So I guess we'll see if that continues, but it's been really awesome. Met a lot of really nice folks already so far. And so it's only been really one night at a shelter. So everyone on the trail, uh, they've been very talkative, very just wanting to chat and figure out, you know, are we all through hikers? Are we just doing section hikes? Which so far, and especially here, 90% of the people that I've come across are all attempting a through hike. So we'll see, I think after the bubble, next maybe 100, 200 miles, I assume that it's gonna get much less, much thinner. Uh, as people sort of drop off or we start separating. All right, well, weather has been actually pretty good this afternoon, so I actually think I will be able to make my way all the way up to the Gooch Gap shelter at about mile 15, 15 and a half. So made some good mileage today, uh, and I am hoping to make my way all the way to Neil's Gap by tomorrow, uh, but I may end up just staying behind uh, just before the Blood Mountain area. So we'll see how I feel in the morning. All right, so finally made it to camp. Uh, ended up about a mile short of the Gooch Gap shelter. Uh, it is about to start pouring rain. So found a tent spot that was really nice right next to the river and uh, wanted to get my tent set up before it started pouring down rain. So we decided to go ahead and set up camp here. It's been a, a good day. I met a couple folks. Uh, very fun to finally start meeting some friends and kind of make my way uh, on the trail together. So uh, tomorrow, only about 10 miles. It should be much, much easier. And after that, uh, I got one more day, about five, six miles, then up to Neil's Gap. So almost there to my first official resupply spot. All right, well, that was scary. Uh, thankfully we made it through the night. Uh, the thunderstorm was much worse than I was expecting. And, you know, the whole time that it's, you know, passing through, you're just praying that lightning doesn't strike you. You're questioning whether, you know, you should have set up camp at lower ground, you're questioning how close you are to the nearest tree, whether or not you should get into the prone position or take your tent poles down. So, uh, thankfully, you know, everyone survived. So, uh, gonna go about 10 miles here today. Typically, most folks will stop at the bottom of Blood Mountain and spend the night before making the trek up and over to Neil's Gap. So I think that's what I'm going to do as well. I really would like to be able to dry out my gear. The weather report is showing nice sunny days for the next two days. And so really looking forward to uh, being able to not be soaking wet. So yeah, should be fun. And uh, looking forward to meeting up with the rest of the crew that I was with yesterday. A uh, few of the guys split up and went a little bit further, and uh, we decided to set up the camp a little early. kind of regret that. Should have just gone over to the shelter, but hey, we made it. Lessons learned, so. All 
All right, well, luckily the sun finally came out, so I'm gonna be able to dry out my clothes. Boy, this is a welcome sight after the two days of rain. Uh, should be able to just go a few more miles and I'll get over to Jer Jared, Gerard Gap. I can never pronounce that. But uh, once I get there, I'm gonna set up camp in order to dry out all my clothes and then just kind of hang out, relax, dry off my feet. And tomorrow morning I will hike over Blood Mountain and make it to Neil's Gap. Really looking forward to the frozen pizzas that they sell there. So I uh, might pick up a, an item or two at the Outfitter uh, and we'll do a resupply at the stores. So just a little bit of information. Uh, there is a five mile stretch from Jared Gap to Neil's Gap where you are unable to camp there without a bear canister. So I just have a bear bag and so uh, unfortunately I will not be able to camp there. They are allowing through hikers though to camp at Jared Gap without a bear canister. Everyone else section hikers are unable to do that. Uh, they're just trying to do that so that people are dispersing or more of the campgrounds are more dispersed and so they can kind of spread it out and not just have everyone clunk up at the Lance Creek tent site. All right, made it to Woody Gap. <laughs> So for anyone wondering sort of how you get water while you're out on the AT, typically at least once every mile or so, you'll come across a stream such as this, where you will actually then pull water and obviously filter it or do something to make it more potable. Uh, just in case there's any sort of bacteria or viruses in it, you wanna make sure that it's all clean and healthy to drink. All right, made it to Gerard Gap. There's quite a few tents already set up. It's a bit windy here, and but there is a water source, which is nice. Uh, apparently it has had some bear activity, so you do need to do a proper bear hang uh, just down the, away from camp here. So hoping for a good night rest. All right, so I just woke up, grabbed my bear bag. It's always a welcome sight. When you see it in the morning and it hasn't been eaten by uh, a bear or other rodents or anything. So uh, last night I actually dropped below freezing, so I'm really, really glad that I was able to dry out my gear. And let's see, I got to about two miles to Blood Mountain and about three from Blood Mountain over to Neil's Gap, where I'll actually be able to have some frozen pizza uh, and do a resupply. So have some, a little bit of real food. Whew. It's the top of Blood Mountain. All right, so the Blood Mountain wasn't nearly as bad as people make it out to be, especially after doing the past few days of just a lot of up and down. It wasn't really any worse than that. Beautiful views up here though. Man, this is one of my favorite parts of the trail so far. Really excited for that, but more excited for the frozen pizza at Neil's Gap. Can't wait, 2.4 miles left. All right, finally made it to Neil's Gap. All right, so a severe winter storm is rolling through here tonight. So a lot of folks are getting off trail. There is a little cabin uh, just right down the road from Neil's Gap. I'm gonna go see if I can get a room. Uh, if not, then I believe I'm gonna go into town. Uh, my gear is rated to, to go down pretty low. Uh, so I would be fine, but you know, I don't really wanna test it right now after uh, being out on the trail for almost a week. Uh, really, a warm shower sounds pretty awesome right now. All right, well, Decided to hop off trail because of the winter storm coming in, and this is such a treat. Got a little cabin here to myself. It is actually two bedrooms, which is really nice. Feel a little bad for, you know, kind of wasting a bed here, but I might message some of the guys that I met here, see if they want to join. But wow, oh my gosh. It's the little things in life after spending some time on trail. It just really means so much. <laughs> Wow, check this out. 
It is mid-April in Georgia, and it is snowing. This is crazy. I did not expect this at all. Very, very glad that I have a nice, warm, cozy cabin right now. 